There are a few important side effects we should discuss for lecanemab and donanemab. First, infusion-related reactions. They tend to occur more so for lecanemab than donanemab. They also tend to occur during the first infusions, more so than later on, and they tend not to reoccur. If they do occur, they tend to be more on the mild side or mild to moderate side. A patient may have, for example, flu-like symptoms that resolve within a day. There's medications available if patients have any reactions that may require treatment. They're monitored in the infusion center for several hours during those first infusions to make sure that if there's any reaction that it can be managed. In rare cases, patients may have a severe reaction requiring them to go to the hospital for further evaluation. Another side effect is amyloid-related imaging abnormalities. That's when the imaging shows either brain swelling or bleeding. It tends to be mild to moderate in severity, and patients tend to not have symptoms. Mild to moderate in severity means that the imaging shows a, a small to moderate degree of either swelling or bleeding. The symptoms can, are, tend to be mild to moderate as well. The symptoms tend to be headache, confusion, dizziness. Patients that are at higher risk of aria include patients that have two copies of APOE4, a risk factor gene for Alzheimer's disease. Also, patients who have on imaging microbleeds or other forms of bleeding are at higher risk of side effects from the drug. ARIA tends to occur in the first six months of treatment, but patients are regularly monitored to evaluate for ARIA through regular clinic visits and regular scheduled MRIs. If a patient experiences symptoms, then a patient will come in and be further evaluated, and then a, maybe an, an MRI would be ordered to further evaluate for ARIA.